morning, boys and girls. We're the Pitt softball team, and we're here to read you guys the Martin Luther King um, book today. Um, we hope you guys can come to one of our games this year, but for now, we're going to read to you. Who was Martin Luther King Jr.? Can you imagine a world where laws kept black and white people apart? Where black children couldn't swim in the same pool as white children, or go to the same schools? A place where laws made it hard for black people to vote, or where a black person had to stand up on a bus so a white person could sit down? This, was, this world was real, and it happened in the United States. Martin Luther King Jr. worked hard to change rules so they would be the same for whites and blacks. He didn't do it by fighting. He helped change unfair laws by making people think. He did it by making people feel. He did it with his words. Protesters want unfair things changed. They sometimes march to show others that they do not agree with what's happening. Lots of black people and white people how Dr. King protest those laws. This made many people angry because they didn't want change, but in the end, the protesters won and the rules were forever changed. Growing up, Dr. King was born in 1929 in Atlanta, Georgia. He was named after his father. He was called ML. Small but strong, ML rode bikes with his brother and sister. ML's father was the minister of the church. He taught his children to stand up for what is right. He taught them to speak out against what is wrong. He taught them that all people deserve justice, which means that they should be treated fairly. When he was six, ML's best friend told him he was no longer allowed to play with ML. Why? Because ML was black and his friend was white. Segregation. Laws were meant to keep black people and white people apart. They kept kids apart, too. ML felt bad. Why wasn't the good? Why wasn't he good enough to play with his friends? ML's mother told him he was just as good as anybody else, and she told him the world was wrong. He wiped his tears. Then ML promised that one day he would change the world, and then his family for sure will all one. Change for peace. Martin Luther King Jr. received the Nobel Peace Prize in 1964. At that time, he was the youngest person ever to have received it. He was just 35 years old. Martin Luther King Jr. was a boy in the late 1930s. Many things were different from how they are today. Transportation? Most people still travel by horse and bike. Only some people were lucky enough to have cars. Cities? Some of the New York City's famous skyscrapers were finished in the 1930s. Two of them are the Empire State Building and Rockefeller Center. Money? Candy bars cost about a penny. That doesn't sound like much, but dollars and pennies were worth a lot more back then. U.S. events. Many people did not have jobs during this time of the Great Depression. Most people had very little money. Toys and free time. Children played board games and listened to programs on the radio for fun. School. Times were tough and some families couldn't afford to send their kids to school. Books, clothes, and shoes were too expensive. A way to live, a way with words. ML grew up listening to sermons in church. He learned how powerful words can be used to help people understand ideas. When Emma was 14, he entered a speech contest. He put his anger about the unfairness of separate rules for white people and black people into words. He made people think, he made them feel. The judges loved his speech and he won. And he said, let us see to it that we give fair play and free opportunity for all people in his winning speech when he was 14 years old. At the Easter Baptist Church is where ML learned the power of his words. A fun fact about ML is that he not only grew up in Heaven Easter Baptist Church, but he later became a minister in love. On the bus ride home from the speech contest, the driver told ML and his teacher to give up their seats to a white people. ML had to stand for two hours. He was mad, but he didn't say anything. He knew he could be arrested for her and he he did. One fact about ML is ML skipped two grades in high school. He started college very early at the age of eighteen. ML worked hard in school. He finished college when he was nineteen years old. He moved to Northeastern U.S. and continued in school. He wanted to be a minister like his mom. In 1952, ML met Coretta Scott and fell in love. They got married and moved south to Alabama. 
There, a man worked as a minister, by 1955 he had gone as far as he could go in school. He had earned the title of doctor, now he was Dr. King. The King moved back to the South to work for equal rights. He saw that not much had changed for black people there. They still couldn't swim in pools or go to school with other whites. They still had to stay in offices, so I would In Alabama, Dr. King had a chance to help. A bus driver told a woman named Rosa Parks to give up her seat to a white person, but she didn't get up. Rosa Parks was arrested because she had broken the law. Lots of people went to a meeting to decide what to do. Aides, janitors, and other working people rode the buses. They asked people not to ride the buses until blacks and whites had the same rules. They called it a boycott. They put Dr. King in charge because he had a way with words. For more than a year, black people walked. They took cabs. They even rode mules to get around. The boycott was not easy, but finally people listened. Black people and white people wouldn't have the same rules on buses. Unfortunately, many white people did not follow the new rules. Dr. King went all over the country giving speeches. He talked about injustice and civil rights. He made people think. He made people feel. And he asked people to join him in protests for change. Blacks and whites marched together to protest bad laws. They went to places where only whites were allowed. A lot of them got arrested. Angry people called them names. Sometimes the marches were even heard or killed. Newspapers, television, and radio reported it all. People around the country were mad. They saw how bad it was to have separate rules. It says, peaceful protest. Dr. King wanted to make the world a better place. He did this with peace, not hate or violence. People sometimes hurt him, but Dr. King did not hurt them back. He fought back with peaceful protests and powerful words. One person who saw what was going on was President John F. Kennedy. The president wanted to show that he agreed that rules should be the same for blacks and whites. So he invited Dr. King to visit him at the White House. Eight awesome facts about Dr. King. One, Dr. King and his father were both named Michael King, but his father changed their names in 1933. Two, once Dr. King was hit with a brick during a peaceful march, he didn't fight back, he kept walking. Three, Dr. King liked to dance. Four, Dr. King learned good ideas from a man from India named Gandhi. He used peaceful protests to fight under laws. Five, Dr. King gave 2,500 speeches during the last 11 years of his life. 6. The statue of Dr. King at his memorial in Washington, D.C. is huge. Its head weighs 27 tons. 7. Dr. King told people to love each other like brothers and sisters. And 8. Dr. King and Coretta Scott King had four children, Yolanda, Mark, Luther III, Dexter, and Bernice. It was August 28, 1963, in Washington, D.C. In the same city where our country makes its laws, a huge crowd of people, black and white, cheered. They had come to stand with Dr. King and protest bad laws. Everyone in the crowd wanted the same rules for white people and black people. Dr. King's voice boomed as he gave his most famous speech called I Have a Dream. Dr. King's dream was for all people to be treated the same. Hard times. Three months after Dr. King's speech, President Kennedy was assassinated. It was a hard time for the United States, but the next president, Lyndon Johnson, kept working to change the rules. In his own words, I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but the content of their hair. His final years, the rules did change in 1964 and again in 1965. Laws were now the same for black people and white people, but not everyone followed the new rules right away. For the next several years, Dr. King and many others kept working. Dr. King gave speeches, he planned peaceful protests, and helped others. In 1968, Dr. King was in Memphis, Tennessee. He was helping black garbage collectors protest for better pay. But angry people still did not want him to change. The man with the gun assassinated Dr. King. Black and white people around the world were very sad. They had lost the man who made them think of you. I had lost the man who helped make our world a better place with peace and justice. But Dr. King left us his words from our country. Over 
Memorial and you can visit the National Memorial to learn your name is in Washington, D.C. There you can read his words about his hope that people can live together peacefully and with justice. You can also sit next to the 30-foot statue and it is called the Soda Pope. From far away, the Soda Pope looks great, but up close, it is really many colors. The colors seem for all the different people in the world. That's because Dr. King stood for a right to all be treated. When he was 19, Martin Luther King Jr., B graduated from college. When he was a child, Dr. King could no longer hurt his best friends because... A. He was black and his friend was white. Number 5. Dr. King's family nicknamed him... C. M. L. Number 6. The day he was killed, Dr. King was in Memphis, Tennessee to B. Help garbage collectors. The Stone of Hope is carved from granite called D. Shrimp Pink. Thank you, boys and girls, for letting us read to you. We hope to see you guys soon. Okay. Okay.